Here's the very interesting question to determine your personality. You just arrived at the corporate event. You do not see anyone you know there. What would you do? You need to select all that apply out of the four different choices. Choice A. Observe others. Wait for people you know to arrive. Choice B. Approach people you don't know and introduce yourself. Choice C. Temporarily leave the event and come back later. Choice D. Check your itinerary to ensure you are at the right place. Take a close look to see if you can come up with the right answer. So you can always pause this video to determine the answer that you would want to choose. Are you ready? I am moving forward to share with you my version of the solution. And obviously, if you have a better way to answer and have different recommendations, feel free to share in comments. I believe that in this question, you are being tested on whether you are a good team player. Work environments are very collaborative and companies are looking to hire people that work well with others. There are no easy ways to determine if a candidate is a good team player. For example, recruiters do not screen for quality candidates, but mostly focus on technical skills and try to submit as many candidates as possible to increase their chances. More than 50% of resumes contain lies. Non-team players hype their resumes to look like A players. Questions on behavioral interview are not very revealing. References checks are generally worthless. This is why companies ask questions on the test that might help them to determine the right candidate. During the assessment tests, companies look for essential traits for the team players. They typically look if the candidate is social, if candidates adapts easily to difficult situations, if candidate tackles challenges with enthusiasm, and whether potential employee is a creative problem solver. They also look for the red flags, and typically red flags are that the candidate likes working solo, doesn't take initiative, and maintains a status quo. Obviously, with these types of questions, there is no right or wrong answer, but there is a least recommended answer which you can spot based on the red flags. Because red flags are that the candidate doesn't take initiative, afraid of unfamiliar situations, and passively maintains status quo, the choices to avoid might be choice A, observe others and wait for people you know to arrive, or choice C, temporarily leave the event and then come back later. Based on what we know, organizations are looking to hire people that are team players, that can introduce themselves and feel comfortable and confident in unfamiliar settings. One thing to keep in mind is that you always want to be honest and answer how you would behave. But you also need to understand that your behavior is unpredictable until you're actually in this particular situation. Are you sure you will never behave as the best version of yourself? Can you become intentional and be courageous even if you feel uncomfortable about the situation? Keep in mind that you can also change yourself and behave as a team player. Considering that team player traits are being social, being easily adaptable, and being creative problem solver, the most recommended answer here is choice B. Approach people you don't know and introduce yourself. Do you have a better version on how to answer this question? Please make sure to share in comments. Can you tell us how many questions did you answer correctly? Please make sure to post in the comment section of this video to share with others. And now let's continue to get you ready for the test. Very frequently during the job interview, you might be asked the question, how would people close to you describe you in few words? As a candidate, you might get worried because this is an open-ended question designed to learn as much as possible about the candidate. Open-ended questions cannot be answered with just yes or no response or with any pre-planned or predefined answer. Information provided as part of open-ended question can also be compared for consistency with the information already known to the interviewer from the previous responses, resume, or candidate's LinkedIn profile. Here's the trick. Even though open-ended questions don't have the right or wrong response with the correct answer that resonates with the interviewer, you have an opportunity to increase 
or decrease your chances to get hired. It is important to be honest and provide genuine answer, but you need to make sure that the answer presents you as the best possible candidate for the job. You should also avoid scripted answers and with every answer, try to increase your chances to get hired. Let's look at the tips and tricks of what you can do to provide the best possible answer to this question. Using three simple steps below, you can dramatically increase your chances to get hired. You can link your answer to desirable traits for the target job. For example, in step one, you can link your answer to desirable traits from the target job using the job description. In step two, you can determine expected job competencies based on your own job experience. For example, you can differentiate entry level, individual contributor or managerial positions. And in step three, you can provide samples from your previous jobs or from your educational experiences to demonstrate that you have the desired competencies and you will be successful on the job. For example, you might be applying for the entry-level analyst job and one of the expected qualities from the job description is open-mindedness. You recall that one of your friends called you a constant learner because you always wanted to learn new things. Your answer to the question might be, my friends call me a constant learner because I love watching educational videos, read articles explaining how things work and read self-improvement books. I think these qualities might help on the entry-level analyst job to better analyze the data, determine patterns and present solutions to the problems, which will help company to succeed. It is important to keep in mind that for the open-ended questions, you can prepare in advance. This way, you don't have to share the first answer that comes to your mind. By having few stories from your past experience available, you can intentionally select the answers that will best represent you using the simple rules. Rule number one, determine what interviewer might be looking for based on the job experience. Rule number two, determine which traits will help candidate to succeed in the new job. Rule number three, find examples from your past that help you increase your chances to get hired. Rule number four, avoid negativity and present yourself in the best possible way. And rule number five, align answers with the overall story you are presenting to the interviewer and be prepared for the follow-up questions. Here's another example if you're applying for the individual contributor software engineering job, for which problem solving is an essential skill. You recall that you might have solved on your own how to assemble Rubik's Cube and your answer might look like this. My friends call me a genius as a joke when I learned how to assemble Rubik's Cube and was able to do it in the record time. Persistence and patience that I learned as part of this experience. It also helps me to solve any problem that I face. I'm always able to determine the root cause of the problem, generate possible solutions, evaluate alternatives and select the best possible outcome. For the leadership position, effective presentation might be one of the expected qualities and you might bring up your ability to simplify and explain complex concepts to different audiences. You might recall that your kids called you the best teacher ever when you explain to them how government works and your answer might look like this. My young family members often call me the best teacher ever because I am able to describe complex concepts in a very simple way based on the level of my target audience. I use this quality to prepare a simple executive summary and one-page visual which helps me communicate clearly and gets everyone on the same page. Thanks for watching. If you like the content, please give us a like and consider subscribing. Thanks for all your endorsement, support and patronage. For additional helpful information, please make sure to check out links in the description. For detailed list of available resources, I encourage you to check out resources page on our website, howtoanalyzedata.net slash resources. If you know someone who would benefit from this content, please consider sharing the link. Please leave the feedback, corrections or suggestions in comments. And all the best on your journey. I'll see you in my next video.